All right, ladies and gentlemen, I'm just waiting on Ashley to pop in here and we can begin here in just a little bit. Let me see here real quick. I want to talk to y'all about some of the amazing things we got going. Oh, there she is. Lovely, lovely. Awesome, awesome. Let's go ahead and get Ashley in here, ladies and gentlemen. Let's see here. Ashley, if you want to go ahead and join me on stage. Awesome. Going uh, yeah. Ashley, what's going on, my friend? Hey, Rod, what is up? Hello, sorry about that. There, for some reason, it wasn't letting me in, but I'm here. It's all good. It's all good. I'm glad you made it. I'm glad you made it. Ladies and gentlemen, one of my coworkers, we've been working together for a long time, about seven years now. Woo! We've had a good time these these seven years, haven't we, Ashley? Definitely. It's been a long time for sure. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. Good to have you. Good to have you. All right, ladies and gentlemen, she's going to be talking about list hygiene tactics for a clean, sweet email list hygiene and its importance to deliverability. Ladies and gentlemen, just going to give you a quick reminder. Please put those questions in the words of James Brown. Please, 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 please put those questions in the Q&A tab on the far right hand side. And let's make sure you upvote the ones that are more subject to the subject. So, all right, A-Rod, I'm going to go and let you take over. I'm going to hang out in the backstage. Everyone, I'll see you all in just a little bit. Awesome. And thank you. Yeah. So as you said, this session is going to be over email list hygiene and its importance to deliverability. As we all know, deliverability is impacted by a lot of factors, but there's some things that we can do at the beginning to be successful and, you know, enforcing certain practices can definitely help us out. Um, quick introduction. Let me switch this out here. Um, my name is Ashley Rodriguez. I am a deliverability engineer at Cinch. I've been with Milgun uh, over seven years, and I've been in email for over 13 years. So I definitely have had a lot of exposure to email with the changes in, in time, and deliverability is my key focus um, overall. So what is list email hygiene? So um, overall, it's the practices the practices in place that you put to maintain a good list of people who are engaged and can actually be active with your traffic. Um, and oh, sorry, I forgot to mention, we actually had a big survey done by our marketing team that asked a lot of people, a, you know, deliverability focus question. And we're going to bring in that data into here so that you all can actually see how people out there in the industry are responding and what practices they currently have in, in play right now. So it actually might be something that you guys might be dealing with or how you guys operate. So just want to mention that because you'll see the data pop up and I'll speak to it. And um Present. So we actually asked a lot of people out there, how often um, do senders conduct list hygiene in general? And we actually had a large amount, um, a little concerning say rarely or never at all. And you wanna make sure you kind of don't fall into that category and put some type of practice into play so that you can make sure that all the work that you're doing, all the time and effort and resources you put into, you know, your marketing outreach, your email list and everything is actually fruitful for you as a business. Um, so what are the negative impacts of having a poor list hygiene, right? The consequences here, um, you can see an increase of bounce rate. You know, that causes your delivery rate in general to be a lot lower. When we're looking at numbers in general, that's not going to be a good factor, right? Um, with that, you do have a higher increase of spam complaints. Um, you do have lower engagement rates. And as well, you put your domain and your IP at risk for potential listings, um, which obviously then impacts delivery in general. But the positive benefits of having good list hygiene, um, you know, you improve deliverability overall. And with that, you have, you know, your higher open rates. Um, you have a better sender reputation, um, but which you want to maintain and have always. Uh, but that enhances your engagement as well as your conversion rate. You know, having people buy into what you're selling, you know, having people go into your website. So you're driving up that type of traffic. So all of that is definitely a positive outcome of maintaining a good list. Um, so survey asks, what do senders believe are the biggest benefits of regular email list hygiene? And luckily a good amount understood that, you know, it's maintaining a sender reputation. Um, you definitely want to maintain that because overall it's going to be, you know, as a sender, you want to have a good reputation. Like, you know, um, it's very easy, like in the credit score analogy, it's very easy to, you know, destroy your credit, but it's hard to build it back up. So as a sender, you want to make sure you, you maintain a good sender reputation. And obviously with that, we know, 
you know, the benefit here is you do have fewer unsubscribe, you have fewer spam complaints, and you improve your metrics um, overall. So um, what are common issues with emailing lists, right? Um, this is going to be what you commonly see, you know, you have inactive subscribers, you have incorrect email addresses, you know, whether it's an uh, invalid email address or invalid domain. Um, you can hit spam traps if you're not maintaining that mailing list. Um, as we all know, spam traps that are out there, they're not just embedded, but sometimes they're addresses that are recycled and, you know, you might be continue, you might be emailing them consistently, but eventually they can possibly become a trap because you know they were sold off and now you're feeding trap data and you're showing them you know that you're that type of sender that's not keeping up with their um, list hygiene. So let me see here. So identifying inactive subscribers and taking action. So um, to be able to identify an inactive you know, subscriber, everybody emails differently, right? Some people email weekly, some people email monthly, bi-weekly, things like that. So um, whenever you are looking at your data, you wanna be able to create like a marker to say like, okay, if I have been emailing this recipient for X amount of time um, and they're not engaging with it, then we wanna start to consider them inactive and taking, you know, uh, proper action towards that. But to be able to identify them, you want to use proper, um, you know, tracking metrics using, you know, uh, you know, like a CRM um, or any analytical dashboards to be able to build that data so that you can be able to understand exactly what's happening, you know, with your subscribers. And then, of course, take action. Um, survey asked, are senders using sunset policies to remove or segment unengaged contacts? It was a large amount of people who said no, and this is crazy because as a sender, um, you want to have some type of sunset policy in place to be able to um, remove those inactive users, right? Because you're consistently emailing them and emailing them and emailing them, and then they're not doing anything with their traffic. All you're doing is you're teaching recipient servers that you're not mailing people who are active, you know, being active with your traffic. Therefore, they start to filter you out because you're literally mailing just dead emails because nobody's in or, in act, or activating with them. So it's definitely important to have some type of sunset policy in place to be able to, you know, reduce that. Um, so what are some strategies that you can take for cleaning your list? Um, so you want to have clean techniques in place, whether it's like regular removal of inactive users, like we just discussed, you know, being able to identify what the inactivity can look like. Now you want to actually have a regular removal of them so that you can get them out of there and, you know, move them whether to a CMB to re-engagement campaign later or something like that. But that way you can have that removal. Um, you want to have the practice in place of confirmed opt-in at the beginning. That way you can have a first line of defense. Um, at, when you're collecting your addresses, as well as using, you know, like a verification tool to verify the address exists so that you can try to remove any typos, any human errors, things like that at the beginning, um, and as, as well as segment and take any of those addresses that are inactive and, you know, figure out how you can re-engage with them at a later time. Um, and how can you re-engage, right, to win back those recipients? Um, you want to personalize and customize your reach out to these inactive recipients. You don't want to sound like a bot coming at them, you know, with like you would at a, in a general email blast. You want to tailor to them, you know, for what it is specifically that they're into, what they're, you know, what they have subscribed for you and what they historically have used or consumed from you. And you, you know, tailor to that to try to win them back. And then, but for some reason you can't win them back, then obviously it's time to retire that address and get them off of your active list. And you also want to use tools for verification. Um, a lot of people, there's a lot of popular email verification tools out there like Mailgun Optimize, Never Bounce, Zero Bounce, things like that. Um, you want to use those while you mail and then even after you've remove people that are inactive, right? So let's say you email your mailboxes once a month, right? So there's a time gap between now to the next month of mailing them. Using a type of email uh, verification tool allows you to, um, let's say something happened between the month send of the user becoming inactive for over quota or something. Um, you can be on alert that that user might not actually be mailable anymore for the time being. So you can make the decision to remove them off of your list so that you can be able to 
you know, have a better delivery rate and also reduce, you know, hitting an address that is just going to cost you money because you tried to email it and the message bounced, right? And then also you could use an email, uh, a verification tool to be able to take an old list that you removed for inactivity for some reason, but at one point they opted in. So you know that they were consumers of yours, they wanted your traffic, but something happened. You can then, you know, take a verification tool, run it through there, see if there's anybody that's mailable again, and then slowly bring them back into a re-engagement campaign, and then see if they can become active, you know, recipients again of your traffic. So um, survey asked, how do senders validate and verify the legitimacy of email addresses? And this is definitely very concerning right here, where 38.1% um, verified it after a manual removal of an email bounce, right? So this basically means that list email hygiene was completely ignored from the beginning because you can, you know, if you have opt-in at the beginning or you have a verification tool, you can get around this right here where you're not suppressing addresses after they bounce, you're actually catching them in real time, you know, upon, you know, signups, things like that. So definitely something very interesting to see out there in the survey for um, a lot of people were seeing, you know, them being uh, valid until after they mailed them. And um, so best practices for building a good list. So when, have the mindset that quality over quantity is going to be super key here. Um, obviously, as mailers, we want to mail as many people as we can. We want to get our traffic out there. We want to, you know, en engage with so many people because, you know, we've collected the address. Like, let's get it out there. But you want to keep the mindset that quality is going to be a lot more successful over quantity. Um, so keep that in mind as you build it. You know, have permission-based opt-in practices, you know, that's double opt-in, confirm opt-in so that they're, you know, you're setting yourself up for success for long-term here. And also provide that value to your subscribers of what uh, they actually want, right? So if, you know, you have somebody coming in subscribing for traffic for house listings, right? You Make sure you keep providing them that type of value. Don't take, you know, that list and send them, you know, your local car dealership emails. Like you, you want to provide them again the value of what they're looking for so they can actually stay um, as good active subscribers to your traffic. Um, so a uh, survey was asked, uh, are senders using a double opt-in to confirm consent before adding contacts to their mailing list? And a huge amount said no. Um, and that, again, is definitely a big concern um, because, again, you're spending a lot of time, money, and resources, and you want to try to get people to opt into your mailing list. And that way you're mailing people who actually are going to engage and want your traffic. Um, let's see here. So segmenting your attack, right? You want to personalize your attack and be able to um, build your data around it, like the demographics and the analytics on it, like to make sure that you are going after people's correct practices and their behaviors and their preferences. So it's very key to be able to segment all your traffic and that way you're successful with it. Um, and then, you know, maintaining that victory list. You've worked hard. You've built, you put time and effort into your mailing list, right? You want to make sure you keep that list successful. And what that means is have regular audits. Go in there and look at your data. Look at the, the metrics of it, you know, if you're open, your clicks, your conversions, and make sure that you're trending in the positive direction. Um, and then take action by putting automation in place like, um, you know, email suppress like suppressions automatically for users who bounce, you know, unsubscribes, complaints, things like that. You want to have the automation be applied to your list, so that you're keeping that list healthy as healthy as possible, right? Because um, you want to remove anybody who doesn't want to be a part of it, and you want to respect that, so that way you can keep your list healthy, and all your hard work continues to pay off uh, for you. And with that, you can use. Um, certain tools that are out there that help you with deliverability, like Google Postmaster, Return Path, things like that. Um, the key thing is, though, is to take tools that give you that data um, and then build certain metrics off of it and read those metrics and apply, you know, changes towards those metrics. So if you see an, you know, a decrease in certain, you know, engagements to certain, you know, endpoints, go look at that, go look at the data, see what changes can be made, whether it's changing your frequency, it's, um, you know, reducing 
certain, you know, email camp type of campaigns, things like that. You want to go look at all of that data to help you be um, successful with that. So with that being said, the big thing we also have to remember is keeping up with the law. Um, as we know, there's a lot of laws out there that protect um, recipients and keep senders like us in check to make sure that we're following them and respecting them. You know, laws out there like CAN-SPAM that have certain requirements and enforce penalties when, you know, they don't comply. There's GDPR that is, you know, uh, um, it's basically consent. It's data protection and it's very, very heavy out there so you know you want to make sure that you're respecting that and as well as ccpa and there's a lot of laws out there but i think the best way of seeing this is is having good practices of clear opt-in and just an easy way for people to unsubscribe is going to just basically be like the clean way of saying like you want to stay out of trouble have a good way of clear opt-in and you know make it easy for people to unsubscribe from your list and it'll be, you know, it'll help you long term for for better success. Um, the let me see here, and that's kind of it there. But let me recap it really quick. Um, obviously, you want to make sure you have good lists, email hygiene in general. It's effective. It it's you know it helps with your costs. Because when you're mailing users that don't want your traffic, you're mailing users that are bouncing, um, that are complaining, things like that, it's all costing you. And you obviously want to make sure that you are, you know, using all your resources to the best possibility. And, you know, it, you want to be compliant as well by following good practices and not mailing, you know, again, people who don't want to receive your traffic. Um, and that's basically it there. So we can jump into Q&A. All right, the best time of the day. <laughs> Q&A. Let's do this, Ash. Let's do this. All right, let's see here. All right, ladies and gentlemen, don't forget real quick, upvote the questions so we can stay on topic, shall we? All right, all right. Let me see here. Ooh, this is this is an important one. Okay. Hey, Rod. We have yeah. split lists engaged and unengaged. Is it worth it to continue to send emails to our unengaged segment? Ooh. So um, it depends. How long have they been unengaged? What I would say is work on a re-engagement campaign to try to win them back. So take a portion of those users. So, uh, often people will try to take that whole re-engaged traffic and throw it in completely. And it could possibly cause problems in your whole little ecosystem. So you want to take a chunk of that. Try to bring it back in by targeting them with re-engagement campaigns slowly and, and kind of see how it goes. If you can get people to become active again, great. If you're not seeing any positive trends here, you probably want to back off of that because you probably have a really old list that's probably not going to be fruitful for you. Exactly, exactly. All right, moving on here. Next question, next question. Du, 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 du. Okay. A lot of good questions in here, ladies and gentlemen. Let me see here. We've got some external ones too as well. Oh, so this one came from an external channel. Uh, Ashley, I'll drop it in here too as well because it kind of helps. But um, why are temporary or disposable emails a problem for list building? Wouldn't they at least work for connecting with people temporarily? I can put that up here. See. Yes, temporarily, but if you don't... Um, maintain a good practice of removing people who are not um, working with your traffic anymore. You're going to continue to email them consistently. You're going to keep showing that you're, let me walk that back. I'm sorry. If you're mailing people who are temporarily and you're not removing them from your list, like you're not having good practice in general, that means you're not cleaning up at all. Um, you can T test when you're, you know, building up your, you know, your your domain and you want to test how traffic is flowing, you're more than welcome to test with temporary disposable addresses, but they're not going to be successful for you in, in this building because they're, they're, it's not going anywhere. And you never know also what can happen to those addresses if they're sold off to traps or anything like that. Love it. Love it. All right. All right. Let me see here. That was a good. One. That was a good one. Moving on here. Let me see. Ashley, too. Let me know if you see any questions in that I think that are super burning that we got to answer. A lot of good ones in here. Um, and if you see a name, call them out, and I can, I'll throw them up here on the screen. 
So Rachel asked a question, are there any other ways to segment besides engage and unengage? So um, with that, it's basically you have to use, um, you have to build data off of this. You have to use, um, you, there's like a third, your, your CRM or any analytical dashboard, things like that. So you can segment more in granular, like more in depth into like who they are, what they do, what they want. Um, but it's going to take a, like you building data to be able to see more segmentation off of just did they open or not um, type of uh, segmentation. Got it. Got it. Okay, let me see here. Also, the crowd is wondering on this one from Casey. This is a different Casey here, but Casey, you want to know with current with current privacy changes, i.e., iPhone updates, currently you know iOS 18 that just came out. What is the best way to identify unengaged contacts? For example, has not opened Click or both open Clicks in the past X months? Ash, what are you thinking? What is the best way? So yeah, um, I haven't got it in depth into the this analytical part, but I would say it'll be um, with a privacy change, what is the best way to identify? We have to see what comes back from these uh, opening clicks to be able to see if there's any data that can be read. Because as we know, there's a lot, a lot of bot activity that happens that has to get filtered out. And if we can build off of that, then we can be able to say like, if there's a certain piece on there that has a like response of a server, an IP or a device type of thing, you can build off of that to be able to get that data, but it's kind of a little hard um, to answer that one just right now. But get follow up on that one. All good, all good. All right, moving on here, shall we? Let me see what else we got here. Oh, here's another external one. I gotta drop this one here because I love this question. Okay. Are there any common benchmarks or signs that indicate when subscribers are considered unengaged? How do I know when they aren't valuable contacts anymore? Yeah, so uh, every, so everybody sends differently. Everybody's frequency is differently. So it's kind of hard to give a one answer fits everybody. But um, the way I kind of look at this is like, let's say you email people monthly or sorry, two times a week. And after, you know, three weeks, there hasn't been any engagement at all. There hasn't been any, uh, you know, drive, drive to any traffic to their websites or anything like that. Then at that point, you can start to say after three weeks or a month, um, you know, start to consider them as inactive because they're not engaging at all, whether it's not going to click on the links, um, no redirects to the websites or anything like that, then they can be considered inactive. Um, so it all depends on you as a sender, how frequent you send, how frequently you send and how often you send to these recipients to be able to kind of make that benchmarker of saying like at this time period, you know, if they have engaged up until here, then we should consider them as inactive and therefore no longer uh, valuable. Got it, got it. Okay, let me see here. Got time for just a few more. Let me see here. Ah, okay, preference centers. Is it okay to completely modify our preference center, meaning removing some existing preferences and adding new ones? Hey, Rod, what yes, are you thinking? definitely. You want to keep that preference center up to date as much possible and relevant to your subscribers. So it definitely is recommended to keep that um, you know, remove that what's not needed, add new ones and just keep it as easy as clean as possible so that people can go in and out and remove themselves. Cause obviously you don't want to lose your, your, your subscriber, right. Um, to, to a, a subscribe from all. So if you keep your preference center, you know, up to par and clean, people are going to be more, um, willing to remove smaller things and still stay as a subscriber. So I definitely recommend doing that. Got it. Got it. Okay, let me see here. I think this is gonna be our last question for the day, Rod. Do win back re-engagement flows trigger spam if you're sending an automation to a big list of inactives? It's possible. So you, what you wanna do is approach it in chunks. You don't ever wanna, let's say you have a big list of 100,000 inactive for some reason. Um, you don't wanna just open the floodgates to all of that. You want to approach this in chunks and in portions to make sure, obviously though, you want to first run through a verification tool to make sure you can remove as much as you can from there. And then you want to go at it in portions and then you want to monitor your data. So let's say you uh, take a portion of a hundred or no, not hundred, a thousand users, email a thousand users. You want to analyze that data, see what came from it. Um, 
and then run another thousand and then run another thousand and do it in chunks if possible um, to try to reduce, you know, a big hit to these uh, recipient servers, which would possibly get you filters to spam a lot quicker um, when you do that. Got it. Got it. All right. All right. All right, Era. That looks like all the time we've got today. I seriously appreciate you taking so much time out of your busy day to be here with us. Most importantly, where can the people follow along with everything you got going on in the email world? Um, so I do have LinkedIn. I dropped it in the uh, slide, and then um, that's basically yeah. it. Let me put that up there for you. There you go. There you go. If you want to follow on with A-Rod, she's uh, always a frequent uh, guest on our uh, Mailgun webinars as well. You can see her on our blog posts and all that fun stuff. And I, uh, I definitely uh, uh, involved in the Email Geeks community. But awesome, awesome. Ashley, I want to thank you so much, like I said, for being here. I appreciate you taking time out of your day. Ladies and gentlemen, can you get some love in the crowd in the chat? Thank you, for uh, A-Rod, for being here this afternoon and morning. Thanks, you yeah. This love is it, fun. Love it, love it. <laughs> Ashley Rodriguez, ladies and gentlemen. Hey, Rod, thank you so much. I hope to see you around soon, all right? Yes, sir. Uh, all right, take care. All right, well, we're going to go ahead and get that break going here in just a moment. I'll go ahead and start that session.